Does landing Jaden Harmon prove the balls are at an elite recruiting level to win a championship? Yes. Yes. And why? They flip an Alabama commit and why? I think Jaden Harmon is the heir apparent to Arian Carter at outside linebacker. And I think that for those who don't remember, Arian Carter was a high profile recruit that Alabama really, 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 really wanted. Very true. And Josh Heupel won that battle. And then he goes and goes after an Alabama commit at outside linebacker in Jaden Harmon. This is, yes, Tennessee's recruiting at a championship level. And Jaden Harmon is a is the is going to be the next in line after Arian Carter. And as part of a trend of Josh Heupel landing elite stars at positions, but now having his future secured at those positions too. I mean, we're talking about Nico Ibaliava. He's got George McIntyre behind him. We're talking about Brew McCoy. He's got Mike Matthews behind him. I mean, we, everywhere you look, Dave, on the roster where you see a player that you're super uh, – James Pierce, he's got Jordan Ross behind him. That's you know, was, everywhere – yeah, I was gonna I was gonna slightly interrupt you, but Lance Hurd, he will now have David Sanders behind. Those are the Lance, three most important. I just did two. Those are the three most important positions in football. Yes, exactly. So everywhere you're looking, where there's a star player that everybody's excited about, there's a younger star player behind him that's committed, and Jaden Harmon adds to that list because we're all excited about Arian Carter, and now he's got the future beyond Arian Carter. This is why to, this is the next step for Tennessee to recruit at a championship level to get these highly touted guys and say, you won't even be able to play your first two years on campus because of how loaded we are at this position is what Josh Iba has to tell them. And they're still committing. That's recruiting at a championship level. There's no doubt about it. Okay. I'm going to disagree with you until I see Tennessee in the top three of recruiting. And I'm going to share a screen with you. And this is the 247 composite rankings that we like to use as our go-to. Ohio State's still number one. Alabama's number two. LSU's number three. Georgia's number four. Auburn's number five. Tennessee is number six. Now, let me start with this. I'm going to look at this from a recruiting perspective. And it might rub some of our listeners, viewers the wrong way. But I'm going to look at it from a recruiting perspective not a program perspective. I think Tennessee is on the same level of all of those schools I just mentioned, Auburn, LSU, Alabama, Ohio State, except Georgia yet. And I think they're getting there. Now, as a recruiting school, Hugh Freeze, no matter what you think about him, is a great recruiter. Georgia is a recruiting juggernaut with 5 million five-star prospects in their backyard. Same for LSU, and they don't go anywhere. Alabama, I believe, will be at that level or is very shortly. Ohio State, another kind of athlete. If Tennessee finishes two to Ohio State, we'll see how things shake out in the playoffs, but I like Tennessee's chances. Now, the reason I can't go with you that they're at that elite recruiting level yet is because I look at the five-star guys, and they're they're on the screen. Please hit the like and subscribe button. I haven't asked anybody at the like button. I need to do that. It's a Monday. I'm getting caught up. But Ohio State, of their 24 commitments, has four five-stars. Of Alabama's 19, they have five. Of LSU's 24, they have three. Of Georgia's 22, they have three. Now, Auburn doesn't have a five-star commitment, but Tennessee only has one, David Sanders. So the elite recruiting programs, not elite programs, the elite recruiting programs are still getting the elite recruits. Tennessee hasn't flipped that yet, but I think they're on that trend. See, and this is where I'm breaking with you. I think that they're a lot closer than you think. One, they're Let's look at the overall composite score. Tennessee is – Ohio State's at 310, but, guys, I don't know if you guys know this. Ohio State is opening the NIL checkbook like nobody's business right now to try to win. They are doing more than anybody in an unsustainable way. Um, so they're at 310. After that, you have a range of Tennessee at 279 up to Alabama at 296. 17 points separate these five schools – that wasn't the case, Dave. You know this when you cover recruiting 10 years ago. There was such a gap between number two and number six just 10 years ago in recruiting. 
That's and a, now that is a great point. There are more play, that, that's a very good point. There are more players. Yeah, there are more players, and I think they're more dispersed out, honestly, than they used to be. So the reason I'm bringing all of this up is that you mentioned those guys, but Tennessee is technically behind Auburn, but Tennessee has one five star, Auburn has zero. And it's debatable with these five stars if you go beyond 247 Sports Composite who should and shouldn't be one. I think more important now in recruiting is being in the same tier and making sure your roster spot is stacked to a degree to address all of your needs long term. And if you do that, then you are – at that point, it comes down to who's better in-game coaching. And, Dave, you and I both are pretty high on Josh Eibel as an in-game coach, right? hmm hmm Absolutely. So, uh, let's let's drop this screen. I think they're already high enough to be a national championship competitor in recruiting. So I think you you and I kind of said the same thing in two different ways. I don't think they have to be number one, but they it would be really nice for the balls to be two three with Georgia or one two with Georgia or three four with Georgia. You need to know ultimately that the talent level is very close to equal. And then I think Josh Heupel can win more than his fair share of battles. But right now, I don't believe that Tennessee's talent level, if George is an A-plus in recruiting, Tennessee to me is at best a B-plus. I'm disagreeing with you. This class is definitely at least A-minus to me. Not the class, just the trend of them recruiting as a program. That's not fair. You're talking Georgia over the past like three, four years has been like, insanely amazing at recruiting and Tennessee's just getting out into that, just getting into that realm. I mean, that's impossible for Tennessee. This class, I think though, looking at it, you should be very happy with it. Not satisfied if you're a fan, but you should be very happy with it. And I'm sorry. I think that's a little unfair to say, why aren't they, why haven't they beaten Georgia from a trend perspective over the past four years with Josh Heupel is less than four years removed from taking over the program, and it was a total dumpster fire, and Georgia's less than two years removed from back-to-back national titles. Well, that's fair. There's two equalizers if Tennessee isn't an elite program like Georgia. One is coaching. I'm going to give you the other one. First, I've got to tell you about our good friend, Banks and Jones, T. Scott Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Other attorneys say they will go to trial. They won't play to win Banks and Jones. The other reason that Tennessee doesn't have to be number one in the nation in recruiting to win a national title. Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. All right. Here's the reason. Well, one is in aisle, but that's really evening itself out. I saw a lot of people over the weekend. Thank you, Spire Group, for getting David Sanders. I'm sure they paid as much as Ohio State offered, but It's not as if they're going out and they're aggressively getting a Nico nowadays. It's just the way you do business. It's like buying a ticket when you go in a movie theater, Caleb. Um, But I, I I would tell you this. The other way that Tennessee can win a national championship without being the number one team in recruiting, which they've done in their history, talent evaluation. Did you know that there were 17 edge rushers rated higher than James Pierce. I did not know that. That's insane. Okay. 17 dudes out there are running around, maybe playing college football that are supposed to be better than James Pierce, who is probably going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft, barring injury. And depending on what the quarterbacks do this season, he may be number one. Talent evaluation has been spot on with this group. Well, that's relative. Position by position, talent evaluation has been spot on. We are talking about the program that went out and got Joe Milton 
and named him the heir apparent to start over Hendon Hooker, not heir apparent, but just named him the start over Hendon Hooker without even having a real fall camp. Let's call it what it is. Joe Milton didn't beat out Hendon Hooker. Josh Heupel had him pegged as the starter before he ever took one snap in practice for Tennessee in 2021. I'm not and... going to disagree with that, but I'm going to tell you that I think that's an administrative sort of issue where you've made up your mind early. Now, it could be a talent evaluation issue, but I know something that you don't like hearing. I do think Milton was a better practice player and Hooker was a better gamer. I don't think it's vastly different where it should have dictated that Milton start, but I, I, I do think there's something to that. Not everything, but something. Okay, maybe, but then there's also, we've talked about it. We're talking about David Sanders specifically. They have missed on offensive linemen to this point. They haven't evaluated um, non-top five offensive linemen well to this point. So that's an issue. You bring up James Pierce, Dave. This is not, edge rushers is one unique aspect, and I'm going to say it, and we're going to put it out there. That's a reflection of Rodney Garner who is the best talent evaluator maybe in the SEC in recruiting. So when Rodney Garner recruits players, he's going to land them. He has – Tennessee has hit – like they have hit after hit after hit at defensive tackle and on the defensive line. Have you noticed that? No, Guys who are not stars who have been reliable. And some of that's development too. I mean, Some of that is development. Yeah. Because James so Pierce like, was considered like the 17th best edge rusher in his class. He was just a four-star. Yeah, that's very true. You're right. And so I think when you think about that, they have just – that's Rodney Garner, who just doesn't miss on that. But everywhere else, there's been there's been some questions about who they can land and how they can get them. And there, there are legit questions about Josh Eichel on that front. Those questions aren't solved. Uh, now, what I will say with evaluation is this, and this is the key part with David Sanders. This is where I'm going to come to your side on evaluation. They do seem to be evaluating well early. And Josh Pate talked about this, must have been a month ago. But Tennessee has a very, very, very aggressive early evaluation program at Tennessee where they start recruiting these guys when they're sophomores in high school before anybody else is and before they know that these guys are going to be five stars. And that was a David Sanders thing. They've been recruiting David Sanders since before they got George McIntyre. They almost are trying to sell it as a package deal of McIntyre and Sanders. Okay, but Caleb, then you've got to give them a slight pass. Because if they're recruiting that early and they're getting involved that early, and they are, they're going to miss some guys. No, you're right. That's that's probably your, I. That's where I'm on your side. I think the reason they they may miss more is because they know that they're playing a little bit uphill, so they're going to recruit very very early to try to neutralize that disadvantage they're at, and they've been doing that. I mean, since Josh Heupel took over in 2021 and Danny White took took over, the first thing they did that summer, Dave was put together an early evaluation recruiting plan. And so they've been on these guys that we're talking about since – they've been on David Sanders since 2021. I can tell you that right now. I agree.